Good morning. May the grace and glory of God be with you today. Good morning. We'll try to find the sweet spot here. Uh, what a joy it is to gather together in worship and praise of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a joy it is to see uh, your, your bright, smiling faces, you beautiful children of God. Uh, it is such a privilege for me to be here uh, as pastor and uh, in our time of worship together. My name is Patrick Schultz. If you're worshiping with us virtually, thank you for being here. We're glad to have you. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will touch you uh, in some way uh, to lift you up this morning. And may you find God's grace and blessings in our time of worship. A couple of announcements I will make. There's two inserts that you have. One is our welcome card. And you can fill that out. Let us know that you're worshiping with us uh, and, and set it aside on the pew. Our ushers will pick it up after the service. And then we have this insert with Genesis 6, 7, and 8 in it. And this covers almost in its entirety. There are parts of chapter 9 that also are included or include part of the story. But this is 6, 7, and 8 that tells us uh, about the Noah story. We find this in Genesis. And uh, what I'm going to do for today's message is Jacob is going to read all three chapters. I'm going to break them down verse by verse. So we should be here just an extra hour or two. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, folks. We're going, to read, we're going to read an abbreviated version of these three chapters. Jacob is going to. And uh, there are highlights out of this. But I wanted you to have the entire text uh, that you can read it on your own at, at your own leisure. A couple of images of, of Noah's Ark there. So you can set this aside. And then we have uh, at, at our halfway through our bulletin the staying close, staying connected. And there are some birthdays happening in our church this week. And we have uh, birthdays, uh, wishing a happy birthday to Abby Herman and Ryan Benversi, to Luke Grunwald. Happy birthday, Luke. Uh, Timothy Heckman, Brian Henschel. Layla Schultz and Bill Heckman. And then anniversaries, Jack and Wendy Schnelly, Ron and Sue Van Dusky, happy anniversary. How many years would this be now? 63 years. That's awesome. Jean and Kathy Kastner, Thad and Chrissy Athorpe, and Steve and Mary Jo Gops. So next time you see them, wish them happy birthday or happy anniversary, as the case might be. You'll also see uh, below that some of the things that are happening uh, in the life of our church. And in particular, we have our Mission and Vision uh, team meeting on this Saturday. And we'll be going through the leadership uh, assessment surveys that were returned from the leadership team uh, and, and those go back five years. So we handed out assessments to uh, our church leaders in a variety of, of capacities going back five years. And so they filled that out and returned them. And we'll be going over that Saturday and looking at really our, our final push on putting this all together and, and getting it out to the congregation. Uh, I should say congregations. As you turn the page, you see some things that are happening. A Sheep's Head Tournament coming up on May 5th. That is at uh, uh, St. James. May uh, 8th is a brat fry at St. James. And this would be Wednesday night. Also, now this is a tradition St. James has. Uh, it's certainly one that you can, you can have as well if you so desire. But for Mother's Day on May 12th, if you'd like to wear a hat to church, you can. And it's, we get some amazing hats at, at St. James and some that are just really awesome. So uh, if you would like to uh, wear a hat on Mother's Day, please do so. And we have our GPS, Grow, Pray, Study. We've got one other announcement here. That's what I was looking for. Uh, July 21st will be our outdoor service. 
uh, joining together with St. James. And we will be having it at uh, Spring Hope Barn. This is Katie and Daniel Soane's uh, venue that they have. We'll have our service there outdoors and then move um, kind of inside and outside with tables set up and so on for uh, a luncheon to follow. And following that, uh, they have hired a, a polka band to come in and play music for the afternoon. So it should be an exciting time. That's July 21st. Circle it on your calendar. That's a wonderful opportunity to invite a friend, a neighbor, uh, somebody to come and join. And if you're not into polka music, that's okay. Stay for the festivities. The food is always good. Uh, the fellowship and friendship is wonderful. And I encourage you to invite a, a, a friend for this. Okay. I think that's it for announcements. Um, and as such, I want to invite you to stand as you are able for our call to worship. Bless us as we meet together. Bless the singing of your praise. The sharing of our fellowship. Prayers that will be heard. Bless us as we meet together. Dear Lord, we pray. And let us pray together. As we gather, let us remember that we worship the God who created this world. The God who spoke through his prophets from generation to generation, led his people from captivity to liberty, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and was faithful even when faced with rejection. The same God who wants all people to be drawn to his love and grace, to know his forgiveness and the joy of his salvation. Let us put aside all that hinders and join together in worship and praise. Amen. And let's sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness, number 72 in the hymnal.
And friends, if you would pray with me, uh, affirming our faith by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. A third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, my friends. And I'd like to invite our young at heart to come up this morning. Good morning, Peter. How are you today? Yeah, a little bit cloudy, rainy, breezy. Yeah, but a good day. Wonderful day. It's a beautiful day. I want to talk to you a little bit about a story that we find in Genesis. Now, you may know this story. It's the story of Noah's Ark. Have you heard that story before? Pretty sure you did, yeah. So in Genesis, in the very early chapters of Genesis, uh, we hear that God is talking with Noah and that God is upset, hurt, that when he looks down upon the world, all he sees is badness, violence, people hurting one another, people not being very nice or very kind at all. And so God decides that he is going to send a flood to wash away all the sins of the world, so to speak, to cleanse the world of all the badness that he sees. But before he does that, he talks to Noah and says, Noah, I want you and your family to build an ark. Now an ark is not like this, although that is an ark, but the ark that God's talking about is a huge boat. And on this boat, Noah and his family and the animals are going to go. And then God will flood the world, cleanse it of all the evilness he sees. And when the waters recede, Noah and his family and the animals will be left to go out forth in the world. And so that's the story of Noah uh, and the ark. Now one of the things that is important for us to remember is that while God saw all of this evilness, and he cleansed the world. He was perhaps a little bit uh, sorry that he had done so. And so he made a promise, a covenant, with Noah and all the world and all the people. He put something in the sky that showed his promise to never send floods like that again. Do you know what he put in the sky? Was it a moon? Clouds? How about a rainbow? So when we see that rainbow, God put that rainbow up there and said, this is my promise to you. I'll never do this again. And it helps us to remember and think of Noah and the ark and the flooding and God's grace and forgiveness when it rains and we look outside and we see a rainbow. Now, I have, I have a couple of things here. This is, this is called Everything I Need to Know About Life I Learned from Noah's Ark. So I have a little picture of Noah 
Noah, Noah's Ark here. You see all those holes in, the, in, in that boat? What do you think caused the, that? Animals? Are there animals in particular? Birds? What kind of birds peck at wood? A woodpecker. We even have one right here. Yeah. Fill that uh, boat with holes. So here are some of the life's lessons that we learned from Noah's Ark. Number one, don't miss the boat. Yeah, otherwise you'll be left behind. We want to be on that boat, on that boat with God. Number two, remember we're all in the boat together. And it's important that we help one another and that we be together and that we support one another and encourage one another because we're all in the boat together. Number three, plan ahead. Did you know that when Noah started building his ark, when God told him to start, it wasn't even raining? It'd be a long time before the rains began, but God and then Noah were planning ahead, so they were building the ark. Number four, Stay fit. When you're 600 years old, someone may ask you to do something really big. 600, that's how old Noah was when God spoke to him. Number five, don't listen to negative Norman or niggling Nelly. Well, yeah, some, it's just people that might point out all the bad stuff around us or bring us down or, or uh, make us feel uh, less confident in ourselves or try to anyway. We, we don't listen to those. Number six, build your future on high ground. We build our future on God and what God teaches us. Number seven, for safety's sake, travel in pairs. Always go in pairs. And number eight, remember, no matter the storm, when you're with God, there's 